Hello, Ransomed Heart podcast listeners. This is your close friend sitting next to the fireplace, Craig McConnell, yeah, with Alan Arnold enjoying another beautiful spring day in Colorado. Hey, Craig. How are you? <laughs> I'm pretty good. Was that a warm good that was, opening? That was, that was a good opening, yes. And we left the listeners last time, if they heard last week's podcast, if I can paint the picture with you on a coral reef, maybe not on it, but in the water, in your Speedo, floating yeah, and singing Jimmy Buffett tunes, right? Floating. Did I get that right? Well, partially, yeah. Jimmy Buffett, yeah, he sings a lot about the tropics. And sometimes we sing along, sometimes we don't. But yeah, it's just floating in the presence of God. So we were talking last time about how that was so replenishing, yeah. restorative for your soul to be on this vacation in the mm. tropics, mm. basically where there was no set rhythm of the day other than to step into mm. the joy of community, of conversation with the other two couples and you and Lori on this boat and just the life that that brought to you. Oh. And, yeah, you know what? Yeah. I think I've laughed more in nine days than I had in five years. Wow. Yeah. Wow. The renewal was so good. So the question was? Well, the question is, how can we experience a taste of that in the dailiness of our life? When, you know, the, the people listening and even I sitting here, I'm like, well, I want that trip. I want to be there. I mean, if I could be there, then I could take care of my yeah. soul really well. That's good, yeah. But the reality is we get invited to take care of our soul every day by God. The rest and the renewal that God offers doesn't ultimately come through circumstances. We think we need, you know, the beautiful setting, which often translates into expensive. Yes. And when really I could share the same experiences of refreshment renewal that I've had walking through a park or on a trail or in my office. Yes. Well, in fact, and I know this is an easy mindset for us to get into in America and just in a busy lifestyle, but it's this mindset of I'm going to run really hard, too hard for 10, 11 months. But then in the summer, somehow take a week vacation and recharge and restore just to get back into, you know, the matrix again for another 11 plus months. And that is not really a way to take care of the soul. Like you can't neglect it for 10 or 11 months of the year. That puts a lot of pressure on a summer vacation yeah. or a sabbatical. Yeah. And how often does that work? You know, right. station wagon full of kids screaming and yelling, when are we going to get there? Or you know, I'm picturing Chevy Chase in the vacation movies. Yeah. Yes. But, but we were designed for a unbroken fellowship and intimacy with God that in a fallen and broken world, we don't have. We just don't have. And thus the importance of renewal, of caring for our soul, of I think, first off, being willing to look at what is the state of my heart. You know, Proverbs says, guard your heart above all else because it is the wellspring of life. And it just speaks to, do you know the condition of your heart? What are you doing to guard it, to enrich it? Does it need enriching? What's the state? Right. That's the thing we're supposed to do above all else. Guard our heart, nurture our heart. Mm -hmm. How do we even begin to examine our heart, though? Because that feels like this loose concept. It doesn't feel very tangible or practical. So how do we go through the day and examine our heart? What do you think that looks like? Yeah. Number one, I think you don't do it alone. You do it with God, with Christ. Self-reflection, you can misinterpret, misstate, or not even see how you're really doing if it's just left to you. But I think one of the first things, and there's so much that could be said about this topic, it's beyond the scope of one podcast, but to ask Jesus, Lord, how am I doing? 
you know, and that speaks to probably a time of silence, of stillness, a time of prayer, just clearing away the distractions, and let Christ speak to how your heart's doing. Now, I'd say that the quality and the nature of our relationships is really a key. If the greatest Mm -hmm. command is to love God with our whole heart and to love others, I'd start there in self-reflection is, is there a personal and passionate, ongoing relationship, conversation, intimacy with God? And how are you doing with people? Loving them, being present, engaged, involved. Those would be places I'd start looking and let Christ, as I said, help you interpret your life in the state of your heart. Well, and as you talk about inviting Christ into that, listening to him, asking him questions, do you think it would also be good to ask some of those closest to you those same sure. or similar questions? So your spouse, your children, mm-hmm. your best friend, mm-hmm. your small group, like you have to be wise and I think smart about how you enter into that. It's not a 30 second question as you're walking down the hall before you head out of the house. But if you can set time aside for that Mm -hmm. and really look the other person in the eye and say, how am I doing in our relationship? Mm -hmm. How do you feel when you're Mm -hmm. talking to me? Am I paying attention? Do you feel my presence brings joy or peace or something else? Mm -hmm. Those are risky, Mm -hmm. but really good questions. And I think, you know, so often we kind of do a self-evaluation there. Well, I think I'm doing pretty good. You know, I'm doing better than my neighbor or better than that guy. And we avoid asking others for that feedback, which if we'll take it and humbly listen without trying to correct their opinion or justify why we did what we did. Boy, I think there's a lot of fruit in that. Yeah, I think especially your spouse, of course. But what you're describing is one of the purposes of community. You know, redemptive community is open and engaged and interested in giving you feedback on how you relate, what's your presence bring. But the key there, do it with Christ and let him speak. Because, you know, he has a time and a kind of a, a schedule, though that doesn't sound right, of what he wants to attend to in your life. I don't want to be working on areas that he's not working on, you know. Yes. It may be discipline that I need. It may be rest and letting things go. Let's let him show us the state of our heart. Yes. And then other places where you get a good read, Alan, I mean, you throw in your two cents here too, would just be scripture. I mean, just as I read the word, the scripture's alive It can pierce and separate and expose things in our life and our heart. Be forgiving as I have. Be merciful. You just read through scripture, greet one another with a holy kiss. Lord, what's that mean? I mean, how am I doing with just enthusiastic and generous giving? Well, we had a disruptive, in the best sense of the word, example of unplanned community even uh, last Sunday at church because it was a time at the end of communion and the pastor did something I've not seen him do before, which was, hey, we're going to go up like always and get the communion elements, Mm -hmm. go back to your seat. But then this time, rather than wait for me to lead us in communion, I want you to find two, three, four people around you Mm -hmm. who are just sitting around you, not necessarily that you've ever met, Mm -hmm. and do communion with them. And that's the end of the service. When you're done, you can leave. Mm -hmm. But spend as much time as you want with that group. Well, for anybody that's an introvert, it's very disruptive because you're thinking, like, who's leading and what are we going to talk about? And But it was one of the most beautiful moments in church I've had in years. Yeah. And we were with a couple who didn't speak great English and they'd been here in the U.S. for a little while, but it was amazing. And it was an entering into 
not just a community we chose, but a community made up of the body of Christ. Yeah. And it was amazing what that did for our souls mm -hmm. was feasting in community with people we hadn't met two mm -hmm. minutes before. Yeah. One other way that God is showing me to really focus on soul care is to change the filters of how I measure my day. Mm. I've gone through so much of life deciding if it was a good day based on productivity, mm -hmm. based on the list of things I needed to do. If, if I have 15 things today or 40, did I get 90% done? Mm -hmm. None. If I got none done, it's not a very good day. If I got most of them done, it was a pretty good day. And the problem was none of that ever focused on my heart mm -hmm. or soul care at all. And so it was allowing me to live a very efficient, productive, busy life where a lot got done, but never tended to focus much, forget most of all or above all, on my heart. And the reason I think that that happens to so many people is because rarely does anybody ever ask us, did you take care of your heart today? Mm -hmm. Did you spend time really just with God and others in a means of taking care of your soul? Mm -hmm. We don't get asked that. We don't get measured by that. Mm -hmm. And so it's easy for that to be always a thing that doesn't quite happen right. until we implode. Or until we realize how dry we really are yeah. and how much we need that living water. Yeah. One of the filters I've seen you adapt in the few years we've worked closely is the filter of God is Father. Mm -hmm. And that one of his highest commitments to you is to father you. And I've seen you with that filter kind of looking for what in this circumstance or difficulty or situation is God as Father doing in or for or with me? Yes. And I think I've seen the significant change in you, Alan, from, hey, how'd your day go? And you answering based on productivity. Yes to, hey, how'd your day go? And what I hear in seeing you is, you know, it was a good day because I was with the Father and it had nothing to do with productivity. I've seen you be comfortable in a day that wasn't yes. productive as you would hope or want. Yes. Well, and for me, Craig, the, the change that that has in my heart is so huge. And it starts, I try to start every morning with this expectancy when I wake up mm -hmm. and it's of a son knowing his father, no matter what happens, mm -hmm. knowing my father has good intentions for me. He loves me. He's, he's shepherding me today and providing for me in ways I get to discover with him. Mm -hmm. And so it really starts before my feet hit the floor. And when I will do that, I walk through the whole day, most of the time, with expectancy of, God, how are you shaping me today? What are we getting to do today? Even the hard times, how do I face that with you, with a good father? And that shifts for me a mindset of, boy, things are hard, but God has a lesson for me to learn. Mm -hmm. Because when I take on that mindset, God becomes this instructor or drill sergeant, and it's get through it and learn the lesson and then do it differently. Mm -hmm. And... In the image I have, his arms are crossed. You know, he's tapping his foot, waiting for me to get it together, learn the lesson. And I had this great conversation with my wife last week about, I don't see God that way anymore. Yes, we learn lessons. Yes, he has things to teach us. But as a father, the main joy isn't teaching our children lessons and them getting it right. Mm -hmm. It's spending time together. And when that shift happens, you go through hard times, not necessarily just trying to get it over and learn the lesson. You go through it going, how does God father me in hard times? Yeah. How do I be a son in hard times with him? Yeah. You've just described your filter beautifully. And having that filter helps with soul care. Another one, and I just know we're going to end with 
so much uncovered ground. But important to me would be when you see, when Christ has helped you see the state of your soul, your filters, how you're living your life, so on and so forth, to invite him to speak to those areas, for him to bring healing, renewal, filling, for him to show you either what to do to feed your soul, to care for it, whether it's a particular book or passage or uh, abstinence or add to your lifestyle. But let's let Christ speak to the need we have for renewal and let him be as specific as possible. And then with a heart that's wide open to say, Lord, come into those areas, refresh, address them. And who knows how he may speak or bring something into your life to speak to that. And then the final thing for me would be keep your eyes open Mm. for opportunities for renewal. God may surprise you with an odd moment in the middle of uh, aisle seven at Costco. He may just show up and speak kind of like my floating in the uh, ocean and He just says, uh, do you want to break that agreement? Yes. So look for a little surprising Mm, alcoves and secret gardens and places where God may want to snatch you and just fill you, renew you, speak to you, be present, father you, care for your soul. He's more committed to caring for your soul and giving you everything you need than you're able to to care for your soul and find everything you need. That's so good. And Greg, just to add on to that, I think the question I want to leave the listeners with is this, how hungry are you to live in a place where your soul is well cared for? How much would you let go of or give up or pursue this journey of soul care? Mm -hmm. Because as you said, so oftentimes it is costly. It is disorienting, disruptive. Mm -hmm. There are things you have to let go of. You may not be able to keep the super great paying job Mm -hmm. and have a lot of soul care because it demands 90 hours of your week and 10 minutes of soul care a week isn't enough. On the other hand, it may be a shift in priorities throughout your day and your job may be fine, but how will you pursue soul care and what will you give up? This is the pearl of great price. Above all else, Mm -hmm. nurture your heart. Mm -hmm. So that, I think, is our invitation that we're trying to step into Mm -hmm. and that we invite others into is let that be your number one desire Mm -hmm. and goal. And we have tons of resources that will help you care for your heart, care for your soul, grow intimacy with God and encourage you to go to ransomedheart.com and just look at a wealth of things that God could very well use to just really enrich, touch, restore you. With Alan Arnold, this is Craig McConnell thanking you for joining us and listen in next week. We'll see you then.